Today, I want to show you how to set up macros in Cubase. Hey guys, Chris Salim here from Mixdown.online. Now, if this is your first time on this channel, feel free to click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I upload a video. Now, a few weeks ago at AES, I met with Greg Ondo from Steinberg, and um, I posted a video on that, um, having Greg showing us a tip on setting up a mix template out of a macro. Later in the video, I am going to recreate what Greg did um, to set up this macro in Cubase. Uh, but first, let me explain to you what a macro is. So a macro is basically a combination of uh, several functions and actions into one. So you can save time to achieve whatever you want to achieve. For example, what we're first going to do is to set up a very simple macro to create an audio track link to a NFX channel track using only one keyboard shortcut. All right, so let's get to it now. First, what you need to do is to go to key commands. Now we have the list of all the uh, commands uh, that are available in Cubase. Down below, we see the tab Show Macros. Okay, just click on that button, and then you're going to see all the macros you have available. Okay, some of them are there by default uh, with Cubase, which is very practical. And thus, if I want to set up a new one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on New Macro. I'm going to call this one uh, Vocal Track. Okay. And then I'm going to look for some commands to set up my track. So the first thing I'm going to look for is to add an audio track. Okay. Add track. So uh, what you do first, you just think of the command you want to add. Search for it. If it's, uh, if it's there, it's going to show you. And uh, you can just click on the plus sign right here. And what I get here is uh, audio, audio mono. You can just, you know, continue clicking on the plus sign until you get the command you are looking for. Now I'm looking for audio and mono is even better. So I'm looking for a mono track. I'm going to select this one and click on add command. Then I'm going to select again. I'm going to look for add track because I want to add an effects channel track, okay, to the selected track. I'm going to look for it by clicking on the plus sign. And there you go, add track to selected effects channel. Now, once Cubase is going to add an audio track, it's going to keep that track selected. So since it's already selected, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to create an effects channel track to that selected track. I'm going to add that command. And there you go, I'm done. Okay. Now, um, what I can do here is to assign this macro to a shortcut. So for that, I'm just going to go into my function list here, my key commands. And I am going to go into the macro folder. Now I have all of my macros. I'm going to uh, select the vocal track macro and assign this one to a shortcut. So I'm going to click on the black space here, okay? And I'm going to just um, uh, select something on my keyboard, a shortcut, let's say. Uh, let's go with this, okay? Command plus shift plus T, and I'm going to assign it. All right, so it's available. If it's not available, a Cubase will let you know uh, which other commands is assigned to this shortcut. But this one is available. So now it's assigned to Command Shift and T. I'm going to click on OK. And now if I click on that shortcut, this is what I get. I get my audio track right here. And now I have my um, effects channel track here that I can set up. I'm going to call that Verb. And I'm going to make sure it's in stereo. Look for a reverb. And there I'm just going to go and select this one. And I have my reverb assigned to this, uh, this uh, audio track. So it's a very simple way of doing so. Okay, there you go. So I don't need to just add these two tracks separately and send the signal to uh, the verb. It all does it by itself. So you're saving a bit of time here. So this is why you use a macro to save time. Now let's go back here. I'm just going to shut this off. I'm just going to close this. Undo what I did. Go back into key commands, show macro. Now I'm going to show you a more complicated macro that I set up on my side. Okay, I'm going to call it reverse. Okay, so what I want to achieve here is I want to be able to select one segment, um, add copy this segment to a new track, process that segment into a reverse, then add a delay to the segment and reverse that back and then add a, um, a reverb or another effect as a send effect on top of that. Okay, so um, this is what I want to do and I'm going to blend this with my original signal. Okay. So to create a macro for this sequence, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into key commands, show macro. 
I already created a new macro. I'm just going to select it. And I'm going to go through all of these steps. Okay, so first I'm going to look for the copy command. Okay, because I'm going to have a segment selected and I want to copy it. Okay, let's look for copy right here. Okay, copy is there. I'm going to add command. Then I'm going to add a audio track. Look for add a track. And I'm going to go for audio this time and not mono, but audio. Add command. And then I'm going to look for paste. Okay. I'm going to add command. Then I'm going to look for reverse. Once I paste that segment, it's going to be selected. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to look to reverse that selection. And reverse, no, this is not the one I'm looking for. And this is a MIDI one, yeah, it's a MIDI command. I'm looking for the uh, process one and the reverse right here, add command. Then I'm gonna look for Echo Boy, which is my go-to delay. Echo Boy is there, I'm gonna add command. And then I'm gonna go back and reverse it again. Look for it again, and there you go. Add command, and then I'm gonna add an effects channel track to the selected segment. So I'm gonna look for it right here. And there it is, add command. Okay, so this is my sequence. I'm gonna click on, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look for, let me, yeah, I'm gonna look for macro, the macro folder. I'm gonna assign this to a shortcut, okay? So uh, let's select reverse and um, Look for a shortcut I can use. Let's go with Command Shift and R. It's available, perfect. I'm gonna click on OK now. I have this drum loop here, okay? Let's try this out on this drum loop. Okay, cool, I'm gonna select that drum loop, just a segment of the, the drum loop by clicking the Range tool right here. Okay, the range selection tool. And I am gonna select a part of that uh, drum loop and then click on my shortcut. And now it asked me to, okay, add a track. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it stereo since my original one is in stereo. Gonna name it loop, add a track. Now I have my uh, Echo Boy plugin. Okay, cool, I'm gonna keep that process. And now I have my effects channel track that I need to set up. I'm just gonna, you know, again, just a quick, simple reverb and go with revelation. And there you go, okay. Now let's look at what we have. Okay, it's right down here, okay? I'm gonna bring that up. Okay, so this is what it sounds like once all of my, once my macro has been applied, this is what I get. Okay, pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna bring down my reverb and just blend that with the original one. So I use the macro to do this because this is something I tend to do once in a while and I just don't wanna go through all of the sequence manually. I set that up into a macro and I'm good to go. I can apply this to all sorts of tracks. So you can do macros with a bunch of different commands, uh, whatever uh, whatever sequence you're, uh, you're used to do. On your side, you can uh, probably assign this to a macro and save some time. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a video that I did with Greg Ondo from Steinberg. He showed us a way um, to create a new mix template out of an existing project using a macro. So uh, we're just gonna go through everything, all the steps he did to create that macro, okay? So let's go into uh, key commands again, show macros, new macro, and I'm gonna call this one new template. Okay, so first, like Greg did, we're gonna look for select all. And there you go, command A, select all is there, I'm gonna add command. Then we're gonna look for delete. If you don't know where it is, you can add it up. If you know where it is, just go there directly like I did here into edit, delete, and there you go. Now add command. Now I'm gonna add something here of my own. I got a question about uh, does it remove all automation and stuff. Um, on, the, uh, on the one that Greg did, it didn't. In this one, if you wanna remove all automation, you can just uh, go and uh, look for that command, basically. 
Delete automation in range. This is not that. I, this is not what I want. But I'm looking for delete all automation in project. Let's try this one out. And then we're gonna go for remove unused media. All right. Add command again, and then save as template. And there you go. So that's basically it. Now I'm going to assign this macro to a shortcut. And there you go. So Command Shift and Y. I'm going to click on OK. And uh, there you go. I'm going to try this out. And I have my Save as Template window. And I'm going to look for this one. Okay, I'm going to write over this one, Mixed on Prod Template Test. Overwrite. And there you go. Now it's done. Okay, now let's click on New Project. Look for our template and I'm going to use this one and there you go okay so there you go now we have a new project with the same settings as the previous one okay so um, something you need to note though okay if you go into your pool okay now we uh, uh, we've removed all unused media in our macro and what that does it sends all media to the trash okay so the thing is if you empty your trash it's going to remove all audio files out of the uh, previous project. And this is not something you want to do, okay? Because if you empty your trash can right here in the new project, um, when you're going to go back to the previous one, you might have a very unpleasant surprise because all of these files are going to be gone. Uh, so to avoid this, we, what you need to do once you have, uh, once you're into your new project using that template, just right click on trash and uh, you can just empty trash, but, okay, just click on remove from pool. Okay, that's it. So um, the original files are still in the original folder and this project is empty, okay? So this is something you have to keep in mind if you're doing so, okay? Something you can do at this point though, you know, if you're planning on using that same template on several mixes, once the trash is empty by removing from pool only, what you can do from that point is to just uh, save that as a new template, okay, and just overwrite the uh, the one you uh, you just uh, did with the macro. And now, you know, if you're planning to on using this template on several projects, um, you're gonna have an empty pool version of the same template. So there you go, guys. So this is it for today, guys. I hope that was helpful. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below in the comment section. And don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe to this channel if you are not already. All right, guys, take care, and I will see you next time.